Um, so we are Team eFest. Um, with me, I have Tiffany and Eric. Um, so I guess we'll go ahead and I've lost my mouse. <laughs> there we go. Um, so for our presentation overview, we're going to be going over um, how we started out, what eFest is, um, exactly what our project was supposed to be, our deliverables, methods, um, what results we ended up getting out of the whole nine month process, our challenges, how we solved them, how COVID-19 affected us, which it affected us very largely actually, um, and the future work recommendations that we have for the PDCC. Um, so eFest is the American Society of Mechanical Engineers Engineering Festival. Uh, it's held in many different places. The United States, they have north, south this year, and then they also have east and west. Um, they had those last year. They decided to try and get more um, competition, uh, larger competitions uh, by getting people to only go to two in the United States um, instead of all four. Uh, they also had one in South America, and then they also have an Asia Pacific one as well. Um, so the competitions that they have there, one of the largest ones is the Human Powered Vehicle Competition. This one, they go through, they have an endurance race, a speed race. Um, you have typically very large teams for that, and a lot of the teams use this as their capstone for graduation. Um, they have the old guard, which is oral and poster presentations. These usually take about 15 minutes of presenting, as well as five minutes afterwards for questions and answers. Um, you do this in front of a panel of judges, and a lot of people throughout doing the old guard um, they end up with job interviews and um, a lot of networking opportunities. So this year they also uh, decided to have the elevator pitch competition. And one of our members, I believe Carlos, also uh, competed in that. And from what I understand, he actually did really well. Um, so that's awesome. Yay for him. Um, and then the IM3D competition they introduced last year. This is more of a 3D printing competition. Um, they wanted to see what you could do. I believe last year they had a hovercraft that you had to fly from one area, pick up something, go through different obstacles, um, and then land. So there's a picture of that in the upper left-hand corner. Um, lastly, they have a student design competition. This one is more of a robot-based competition where they had um, tennis balls and you had to like move them around. Uh, this last year they had different size balls that you had to get in. Um, from one area to another, you had to pick it up, not hit the post, uh, just random things like that. And then they also have seminars there that are usually about 60 minutes long. They have booths, and these booths and seminars usually include the companies who sponsor them, as well as um, anybody who wants to come and speak at eFest. Um, this is where it makes it such a great opportunity for the students to network. So um, our project description was to go to EFS North in 2020, promote the Collegiate Council, and then educate students about the petroleum ind um, industry. We noticed that there are a lot of students who don't have the opportunity to really get involved in the petroleum industry or they don't know how. Um, a lot of them don't even realize it's such a big industry and an opportunity that they can uh, get control of. Um, so we wanted to spread that word by having uh, our interns, mentors, um, and then our team and Danielle there as well to just answer questions, get them a little bit more comfortable talking about it. Um, and then we were going to do this by having a booth, a 60-minute presentation, and a mini table game. So when we met last semester, we decided that our deliverables were going to be fairly short, um, just depending on the fact that we didn't really have anything to start off of beforehand. Um, so we just wanted to have a proposal for eFest and then moving on if this was um, gonna be approved by the eFest organizers, we would end up wanting to set up a booth and then also having the seminar. Um, we knew that we wanted to have the activity and the game as well as a presentation about what we are and small little things that the students could take home. Um, and the presentation booth actually ended up uh, something similar to what um, Angelica Adalia 
and Tiffany did for the women in engineering booth for petroleum division, um, which is shown also at the bottom of the screen. Um, and then our proposal for EFES would have included the cost chart, execution plan, and the schedule of um, exactly what we we're going to do, how we we're going to do it, because the engineering festival is three days long. Um, and then all of this can be seen later when we talk about more about our methods and how we did things. So the first thing that we started out with doing this is the task report. We wanted to make sure that we got everything that we could and all of our tasks were easily um, manipulated. We wanted to make sure that everything was evenly distributed and that each student that was working on things um, wasn't overloaded because being in um, Texas and Arizona and uh, Mexico, we just wanted to make sure that we understood that we wouldn't be together working on everything physically. Um, so the deadlines were moved around and then task reports were given to the interns and the mentors uh, regularly whenever they asked. Um, and the full task proposal can actually be found in the team manual, which I believe Eric should have uploaded into the chat room box, if you guys would like to see that. Um, so next is going to be Tiffany. So for all of our methods and results, um, we put, we've added little snippets. Um, these are just little clips. Um, the full documents are in our manual. So some other methods that we used was we used Trello was utilized to keep track of deadlines. GroupMe was util utilized for our main resource of communication from like the day-to-day -day base. Skype was used for our conference calls when needed with members of the teams, the interns and mentors. And email was our primary co uh, communication between everybody when we needed to send documents and uh, make meetings. Next slide. For the schedule constraints, there was emails sent out uh, to vote on dates to work around everyone's schedule and the team organized meeting agenda to help the meetings move smoother. Uh, for our documents, all the documents were looked by the members before giving them to the mentors and interns through a Google Drive. The documents that was sent uh, to the event organizers were looked over by interns and mentors as well. The documents was set up with the formal style with the ASME PD CC logo to use on every document. Next slide. Um, the, the team was granted two booths for EFIS during the event. This cre created opportunity to have a display on one table as well as a game set up on the other table. Uh, research was done on promotional items to be given as prizes for some of the games, as well as giveaways for the booth. The team planned on uh, using signs from the office for the other table to just have a nice display. The booth was also going to include computers to run promotional uh, PowerPoints on a time loop, as well as uh, QR codes set up for students to be able to check out the website and complete a survey. Also, the team set up an eFest itinerary for the members' location and times, as well as set up the 60-minute talk session that was accepted from the proposal. The team actively seeked advice through the entire project, and the greatest resources we had were the mentors and interns, as well as networking sources that were able that they were able to share with us. For our results, the team created a proposal to be able to be part of eFest um, by having a booth. A clear and concise proposal was written to go over the team's plan and um, what they were going to actually do to ex execute that plan by attending eFest North and um, how the collegiate and how that would like affect the collegiate council. This was aimed towards uh, anyone who was unaware of the eFest event or ASME. PDCC organization. The team uh, reached out to Don Wells to get information about the petroleum game he had mentioned in Houston. We were able to receive the game and rules and the team modified this game to cut down the size and the time length to be able to have this set up at our booth. 
the team did extensive amounts of research to compile an Excel spreadsheet for each uh, potential cost. This list gave multiple options to each sections to be able to build a proposal cost budget for, for attending eFest. This document includes things like airfare, hotel, game cost, Uber, and food. Everything was recorded along with the links for each section. Um, as a result from the research of the cost, the team did create a proposed budget that, that was accepted uh, by the team for the team to attend eFest. This document section goes over the overview of our, our execution um, as well as the three uh, sections for the budget where we broke it down into most cost efficient, middle ground, and most comfortable options. Uh, the team created a manual that included all the paperwork that was done over the year, as well as the contacts that we made in order to get to be able to get to eFest this year. Um, for some of the challenges and solutions that we faced over the year was scheduling due to um, everybody having busy schedules and a lot of conflict. Um, for our solution, Danielle help, helped with setting up a system that we were able to like vote on a date uh, for our Skype meetings to help it um, be able to resolve that issue. Uh, for communication, there was times that it was slow throughout the year um, uh, due to other stuff going on in everybody's uh, busy lives, but uh, as a solution, when we did get together for our meetings, we uh, quickly updated everybody so that we could move forward with our project. Uh, for the pricing, since we were the first team to efficiently analyze the costs necessary to attend EFES from, the, from our research, uh, the challenge was being able to add this to the overall budget for the Collegiate Council. This, the team solution was to try and reduce those costs to make sure that the EFES team would be able to attend. Um, another challenge and solution was uh, what affected us in COVID, which can be on the next slide uh, with Eric. Yes, uh, COVID-19 affected, direct, affected directly to us and affected the many activities around the world. And obviously, because of this, our activity will be able to be executed this time. So as preventive measure to safeguard the attendees, students, speakers, head, the EFS organizers took the decision to cancel both EFS, the EFS North and EFS South for this year. Also, Daniel had to cancel the hotel and fly reservations. And well, as a result, our booth, the 60 minute seminar game and other activities we planned when able to be executed by the team. Uh, next slide, please. In response of that, the team created a document, which basically is a manual that highlights all the steps taken to organize this event, the people contact, the documents created, and this with the aim to work as a tool for the next CC students year to run this event if they want or they are interested to do this activity. This this manual is already input in the in the chat room. You can you can see and review if you want. Also, the team is proposing uh, next please. It's proposing a future work recommendation. This is based on the CC goals and petroleum division spirit, which is to promote the oil and gas industry between all the students and share the benefits that the Joseph PD has to offer to students. This is during the IMISHI, which is the International Mechanical Engineer uh, Conference and Exposition event. This is the biggest mechanical engineer conference event in the world and the most important SMA event. This held more than 400 sessions. All the 18 SMA technical divisions are present during this event and more than 20 student programs are delivered here. And in one of these 20 student programs is where we want to focus on. Next, please. We want to focus during the SLTC, which is a student leadership training conference. This is a two-day event which 
gather more than 50 students from around the world, specifically from the five main ASME regions in the world, and also the ASME executive director currently and past presidents and president during this event. At the bottom, you can see a banner of the last year event, which was held on Salt Lake City. And below is an agenda, which is pretty similar to CC agendas. This includes uh, seminars, technical talks, workshops to develop soft and leadership skills. And where the schedule and the agenda is are diversified, so we can request a spot to participate in this event and share the opportunities that the show individual has to offer to the students. But why is this so convenient? Well, let me explain it. Uh, next, please. As I mentioned, this event is focused on student leaders. So, and I mentioned that the students' structure is divided into five main regions. These five main regions are the North America region, Caribbean and Latin America region, Middle East and Africa, Asia, and Europe. Here in the, in the graph, you are seeing the North America region, which is the, the region where I'm going to focus on. Here we can see the structure of the of the students' organization. Each of these uh, each of these regions are, are represented by a student. So we have a leader for the main region, which is the which is called sorry the student regional board, and then that region is divided or the North America region is divided into four regions, which is which are Northeast, Western, Midwest, and North America, Mexico. For this example, I'm just going to explain the region of Mexico because I'm pretty familiarized with this region. And well, for Mexico, the country is divided into three, north, center, and south. And in the case of south, we have five student sections here. One, it's important to remark that one of the ASME requirements in order to have an active student section is to have at least 15 students registered with a valid membership. So here for this example, I just input 10 students, but in reality, this student section has 37 students. So the, the goal here is to deliver the message to the right people so they can share properly our message to all the students possible. So making a, 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 a quick calculation, sorry, and, take, and making a reference to the last year work that the database team of the PDCC did, they <coughs> registered that just for North America, we have 188 student sections. So if we made uh, just a quick calculation and considering just the minimum quantity of the students, we have 188 times 15 and the result is 2,220 students which using this structure of the SATC. Because as I mentioned before, during the SATC, all the students, leaders or representatives for each region are present. So we can deliver the message to them and they can deliver that information to all the students which has on the his church. So in conclusion, next please. So in conclusion, we can do a, a, a job similar to the job did before to, with the IFES. We can contact the organizers, set a plan, a work plan, and request a spot during this event. Also, we'll be joining other ISME divisions, which are present during this event, and participate with the students and exchanging information. So participate here, we give us opportunity to deliver successfully the ASME PDCC message, the program benefits and encourage students to participate. But also, this will give us the opportunity to ensure that students leaders share this information with all the student sections. So uh, basically, this, uh, this is the future work recommendation for the team and this will be out for, for us. Thank you for your attention. If does anyone have any question, please feel free to ask.
So I wish you had the opportunity to go to eFest, and uh, um, uh, I think eFests are, are fascinating events. And so, um, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, um, you didn't have that opportunity. Um, but I do want to say thank you. Uh, this is a really incredibly important work uh, to help spread the word. Um, and um, I, I, I'm curious. Uh, uh, I, I'm curious from a personal perspective, if, if you didn't have an opportunity to go or what were you looking forward to the most with, uh, with uh, supporting the eFest? I was actually looking forward to um, going to the human powered vehicle competition. If you've ever seen that, that is one of the best things to see. It's so many students that are coming together and just going crazy and screaming and it's like three days of being out in the hot sun and that honestly i wanted to go for that reason <laughs> other than of course like having the opportunity to set up a booth and and sit there and talk with um having the 60 minute presentation and like sitting down with students that probably would have been the best thing ever <laughs> awesome I, awesome. Uh, it says, so just a, just kind of an observation to the entire group. I think um, that kind of personal energy uh, where, you know, where you got excited saying, oh, I want to see the human power factor. I think, uh, I think if we can tap that type of energy uh, on a consistent basis, that's, a, that's awesome. It's a question of how, how, how do we do that? How do we plug into people? And the EFS are a great way to do that. So thank you. Thank you. Do you have any thoughts? Mm -hmm. uh, to simplify it, it's, it's awesome. It really is. Uh, you know, what, what you're doing, it, it, it's, it's a great message. And I don't think anybody can convey that message better than you guys being students yourself. Uh, it's different when when we talk and it's different, you know, the language you speak with the students, it, it's, it goes beyond the, what we can provide. So I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed on, uh, and I find this very beneficial actually to learn more. I know we, we hear a lot from Dina and Don all the time what you guys do, but just to see this firsthand, uh, it's, it's, it's very impressive. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I have a question for the executive community. Uh, last year I attended the uh, mission and actually I met Mr. Ryan, but I wondering why uh, the petroleum division is not participate participating during during this during this conference. Well uh it looks like, did you meet Brian Lair, you said? Was Brian Lair or you met him? Um, no, Mr. Ryan Webster. Okay. So, so, so to, to, uh, it's a very good question. Uh, the, the reality is that we are all volunteers in the executive committee. And it is, we all, all have full-time jobs. So it, it, is, uh, it is a little bit of a difficult at times. And uh, I would have to say that the activities that we have throughout the year, they on itself, they really, uh, they take a lot of our time. We have uh, monthly meetings. Uh, we, you know, uh, we have some planning sessions that we do normally during the summer, but this year we'll probably do them virtual. And, and beside that, uh, a lot of us are involved with other, even additional other activities. Like I personally, work with OTC, you know, which takes all of my time. So it's, it's really, I think it's, it's just where we can be, but I can tell you this with, uh, with what I've seen here, you know, if I get an opportunity, I, and if my time allows, I would love to be there with you guys and see them doing it firsthand. So, uh, let's keep fingers crossed for next year now. Yeah, I hey, think you, I, go ahead, go, go ahead, Don. I was going to say to Jim and Brian, um, you're seeing this thing called Collegiate Council that takes a fair amount of effort from, from the regular participants, such so Danielle, Dina, and myself. I happen to be an ex 
executive committee member, Dina not and may one day, but think about what we're doing and I'm not trying to make us special, but we're able to get done with this. That might point to executive committee saying, can we form some subcommittees to do those kinds of things that y'all can't get to? So if you, as a committee saying, how do we organize, organize ourselves? And, and in the last year or so, there's been a bunch of that with, you know, with the, uh, the documents that, that we've been now filling out to describe what it is we're doing in this net. Maybe the next step is to say, how do we multiply ourselves to be able to do what Eric just asked? And, and that could be with some subcommittees that you recruit either from past DC members or just folks that want to give back and have a passion like Dina to, to what's happening here. So think about that as y'all are planning and looking forward. I, I think that's a great, uh, I think that's a great point, Don. So thank you. Um, so I, I'm looking at all the pictures and, or maybe not all the pictures, you know, cause some people have their monitors turned off. Uh, but uh, I, I'm looking at all of y'all and um, uh, I'm kind of thinking that part of the, the, the crazy plan that the petroleum division has is that every one of you is, you know, we, we want you to go infect uh, a whole bunch of people, not with the COVID virus, but, you know, with, uh, with the passion that you have for, for engineering, right? Um, and we want you to, uh, to come join ASME. And, and so it's like, it's like a 10, 20, 30, 40 year long plan that we have that each one of you all is, is going to take this passion and, uh, and share it. And um, to, to the question, to answer the spe specific question is, um, more hands make the work easier, right? And so um, there's a limited group of people. And so, for example, um, you know, we, we, we have to juggle and we have to juggle between, you know, our, our paying job, we have to juggle with uh, other organizations, you know, we juggle with uh, ASME and it's just a question of how, how do we prioritize? And so, you know, for example, um, you know, in, in my case, you know, I, I'm a scout master. I'm also, you know, help with my kids. And then, you know, like I was repairing a fence earlier today between me and my neighbor, you know, we had a, a problem with the fence. And so it's, it's like one of these things that um, I think that each one of you uh, has the opportunity and, and the challenge that you're going to have as you go forward is um, you, you have to choose a couple things. We can't do everything, right? You know, we can't do it all, even though we want to. And so I think, I think I would, uh, the advice I would give each, each person on the call is think about, you know, where, where you can make a difference and what you're passionate about, what you're interested about and go, go, go do what you can there. And it's just a question of balance. And so I, I know some people that, you know, they've worked for 20 or 30 years and then they realize that they aren't happy, you know, because, you know, they, they've been focusing on some things that maybe didn't go so well for them. Um, and it wasn't aligned, the decisions that they made weren't aligned with um, where they wanted to go. So if you can keep, keep that in mind, and if your passion's OTC, and you work with the offshore technology conference, uh, you can do amazing things. And then, you know, if you can do deal with the collegiate council and help with that, that's great. And so that's the challenge for each one of you is each one of you has a incredible passion uh, for uh, some of these things and uh, please share it. And, uh, but you yeah, also have to figure out, you know, uh, your bucket only holds so much water, you know? So if, if I, choose a glass I've been drinking, you know, you can only fill it up, you know, your day up with so much. And so you have to figure out, you know, what percentage goes to, you know, work, what percentage goes to other uh, activities and organizations. So I, 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 I hope there's some insight there that uh, is useful for each one of you, but I think you're doing a great job. And, but that's a very good question. Thank you. Let me, let me add, and we're, we're well ahead of schedule here. Not, give me, patronize me and, and, answer that question if if a group of young students came to the executive committee and said can we present a proposal to you i i have a hard time believing the executive committee would say no in fact they would say thank you and we'll buy your lunch if you showed up with an idea that met the goals of 
ASME or the patrolling division or the executive committee or whatever and presented it with the quality that you put this together. What is it our goals? How are we going to deliver it? What's our budgets? What's our alternatives? What if this doesn't work, this and that? And that you thought through it and say, we would like to do it. Someone's going to say yes. And guess who's in charge? Y'all. And instead of being the person that joined an organization and you pay your monthly, your annual fee, and that's what you do, you have now become a leader. And guess who the industry goes to for the next good jobs and the next opportunities and the next promotion and the next this and that is leaders. And just very quickly, I'll just share a quick story. I don't know if I shared it there. But I, I was a few years out of college and my boss got asked to join API 17D, which is the industry standard for subsea equipment. I asked, asked Jim. And, and he got asked and I asked him, hey, is there any chance that I could, could do it too? And so he said, I'll ask at the first meeting. And they said, sure. And he came back and said, sure, you're now on the wellhead chapter. Well, I attended the first meeting, and in this room were all these people I idolized and had heard of. I was scared being there. I was so out of my league in some ways. I did my homework from the first meeting, and then I did my homework from the second meeting, and everyone else was sort of busy, so they just took my work and used it for their... The third meeting, the chairman had to step down. And they said, well, who will be the chair? Well, there was one young guy there that had done the homework for the first two meetings, and they said, Don. So three meetings into this thing, I was ch chairing this part of API. And the reputation I got from having that title is a significant part of my ability to do my work. And so this, this whole collegiate council is meant to be a learning experience. And, and that's an example where answering your question, how do we make that happen? If you just go and say, let me go make it happen and, and have the answers for these organizations that whether it's time or finance or this or that, in your back pocket. Don't just walk in and say, hey, I have a great idea. Who's going to do it for me? Going with your proposal. It may not happen the first time, but it might happen the third time. And all of a sudden, now you stand out amongst all your peers. And so that's, that's one answer to your question that won't benefit the event, but will benefit you and the event. So. Um, just just think about that as you guys go forward. And the fact that you're on the collegiate council and doing what you've done says you already have a lot of that personality in you. So it's not like you got to do 180 to get there. Just keep in that same direction and you'll get there. So, so along those lines, I, I thank you, Don. I, I really appreciate that. So if you reach into your pockets and pull this out, yeah, your, your keys, right? So you guys are in the driver's seat. You know, you're, 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 you're in the driver's seat and uh, ASME or ASQ or API or any of these other organizations that you can be a part, a part of. If you volunteer, you help out, you, you get engaged, uh, you have the keys to the car. Uh, and being in the driver's seat as a volunteer, you can actually drive your career and you can drive the industry, you can drive a lot of things. And if it's mutually beneficial to help a lot of people, uh, lo and behold, you'll be amazed at just how far you can go and what you can do. And so I would encourage you to just grab a hold of your keys, you know, like literally, grab a hold of your keys and hold it up and say, hey, you know, every time I touch these keys, I realize I'm in the driver's seat. Exactly. The, the world is run by those that show up. So, or get behind the steering wheel. Got on to Brian. 